Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wizzo Talk. Appreciate y'all all tuning in. Got some fire conversation for you, so please don't go anywhere. We're going to meet our guest in just a minute. We're going to have some random conversation going. But before we get started with that, as always, I like to say it is absolutely free, 100% free to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate your support. And just also to put out there that I am always looking for guests to appear on the show, especially women. For some reason, it's really hard to get women on the show. But if you anyone you out there watching it, please hit me up in the comments and let me know that you like to be on the show with one of these random topics where we just talk about a bunch of random things that's going on. We may not all agree, but hey, it is what it is. So with all that being said, we're going to meet our guest and we're going to dive right off into it. So, Mr. Ari, what you got, sir? All right. First thing first, I'm going to go ahead and hit the stream button that the brother told me about. So it's streaming on my uh, YouTube as well. Uh, yes, hello, sir. everyone. My name is RVB Baker Jr., uh, president of I'm Illa Group Consulting. It's my own personal business. Uh, I know Mr. Wizzo from way back during our Iraq time, and I'm just happy to be here to talk some things. All right. All right. All right. Mark, what you got, Mark? Uh, greetings, everyone. This is my second time on the show. Thanks for inviting me back. I enjoyed it the first round. Um, I'm looking for just got off work, so I'm I'm looking to get into it. See what's what's on, what we're gonna talk about today. All right, all right, and, and Mr. Rice. Oh well, I didn't Chris. call the name of the show, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm uh I'm Chris. I'm my tag, my, my gamer tag is Rice and in in at in Temple, Texas, they call me Sticks. That's why I had it up there. I got a small print business. I just help the local uh moms and pop stores uh, put their brand on shirts and I charge them a really decent price instead of charging them like that. And uh I'm also the Black Heritage Committee chairman of Temple, Texas. So uh thank you, Mr. Paul Wizzo, for having me on for another time. Thank you very much for that, sir. All right, all right. And before I call on my first um, uh, guest here to to uh, normally, I start off with a topic, and then we all kind of roll with it. This time, I'm gonna mix it up and try someone different. But just to say that all of us in here, nobody knows what we're going to talk about. I have my own list. You guys have your own list and everything. And I say that to say because someone made a comment one time on the YouTube about. Go and let those guys get paid for what they're getting paid for. Well, there's no income being generated here. And everybody have their own topic. So there's nothing staged. There's you, The answers you get into the questions, they just like it. It is what it is. It's just raw and uncut, and we just make it do what it do. So with all that being said, I'm going to let Mr. Mark go ahead and start us off and get us jumping. Oh, I get to start off with the first topic? All right, then. Come on with it. All right, jump. I want to talk about the impact of fathers hmm. in the home. That that's you know you you get a lot of pushback. Got a man. I feel like we get a lot of negative, a lot of pushback, but I don't really hear enough about the positives that are going. That's not to say we shouldn't dis, uh, discuss the negatives, but I want to go around the room. Give me, give me some of the positive impacts of having a father, a grandfather in the life of their children. Okay, well, uh, I'll speak on the father part, and mm -hmm. I, I am a pawpaw. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, for me, I mean, it's just, it's an, um, it's, man, it's truly an adventure, you know, with my kids. I have been in my kids' life from, Beginning to the end, I've cut one of them umbilical cord. I mean, I have three of them, and the other two I didn't get to or whatever. So I've been there the whole time. The only time I have not been around my kids was during the time that I worked in Iraq for those few years. So, but other than that, I have video footage of their activities, their games, they jam, they they whatever. And one of the kid, one of my kids made a a, a post the other day about how daddies are with their kids as opposed with their grandkids. And you guys may have seen that. <laughs> so, and, hey, I was tough with them. I showed them tough love. But, I mean, when I tell you that my kids and I, we have a conversation almost like every single day. 
you know, one of them calling me, even my oldest son is 38. So, and he's there. And what I try to do is I try to break the cycle, you know, and try to do things for them that my dad didn't get a chance to do for me and stuff like that. So I'm always there. I'm, I'm hitting on everything. I attend all the functions. You know, I'm just, I'm there. I am, I am Paul Paul, you know, and I'm, I'm dead and my kids know they can call me for anything. So I'm glad to be in their life. Uh, has there been some negatives? Yeah, it's some tough love. I've had to tighten that ass up a few times, you know, but they know and they understand that and they appreciate that. <laughs> so that's just kind of how it is with me. And I'm just a phone call away. I've, I've traveled to Nebraska. I've traveled to, uh, Kansas City to watch my daughter run track when she was in college. I've traveled to Chicago many a time just for a turn and burn. The game was on Saturday. I get there Saturday morning, watch my son play, and I was out Sunday morning, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I am there, and that's that's me with uh, what I have. Go ahead, sir. I'm 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 in the listening mode. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, I, I can share uh, being the dad of uh, four biological and uh, three step kids. Uh, in, in my world, one of the things that's not given to dads, especially stepdads, is that uh, we step up to be that father figure. And when I say five, father figure, not just the one that disciplined them, even though we have to give them the tough love. Um, one of the unremarkable things that we dads mostly do without any gratitude is number one, we're that first defender. There's, there's nothing more reassuring to a kid to be able to say, I'm going to tell my daddy. Mm. You know, I, I saw this with my kids and my stepkids. Uh, when when they say, uh, I need you to come here, they don't expect me to say, no, I'm not coming there. They know I'm coming there with the fire, you know, and that's something that's reassuring to them. The other thing is that I don't think enough dads are uh, giving credit for we're the cheerleaders. I'll, I'll speak for self with my kids. I'll never tell them that it's something they can't do. I would tell them, okay, how are we going to do this? If you want to do it, how can we do it? We'll make it happen. But a lot of us fathers, we give them that, that hope, that spark to say, you know what? I think I could do this. I think I could do it. It might be hard. My dad told me I can't do it this way, but he told me to try this. And those are those little things that stick with them um, through life, and they get it from dads like us that really genuinely care. And I've ended with this. With my kids, I see them as an investment to the future. Not to the future that I'm going to be here with, but the legacy that I leave behind when I'm not here anymore. Every time I'm teaching my kids something or showing them something, I'm passionate about it because I want them to be able to operate when I'm no longer in this space with them. And I don't think enough dads get credit for that. Thumbs up on that. Y'all make me sick because all y'all was faithful. I wasn't faithful. I, I was I was trying to be a gangster. I, I was terrible at it, but I tried real hard. So I had kids young, but what I I didn't have a father in my life like that. My my dad just wasn't a fatherly type. He was real cool and and calm and. He was a tax man, so I learned a lot about math. But as far as like hugging, saying I love you and stuff like that, my mom and dad both hard. They didn't do that, you know. And I, I'm vocal. I, if you love me, tell me, you know. Um, but I I did the best I could staying in my kids' life because I knew how it felt not to have nobody to call when you're in a crucial moment. Your mama. For girls, your mama might be suffice because she a lady. She can show you some things. For boys, it's hard for a mama to tell us anything because they ain't never been a man before. And we know that. So with my sons, I, I end up having to raise them because when they got out of hand with their mama, they knew they could come to me. So I, I did everything I could. Like Orby said, even though in my wrongdoing, I did everything I could to make sure they had all the tools essential to become successful, whatever I had to do. Some of them think I was, I left them out because I had to work so much. But when you got child support and then they come live with you, you just got to make it work. Yeah. You just got to make it work. So I had to go get more money. It wasn't a big deal to me. 
because that's what I felt like I was supposed to be doing. I didn't want any uh, praise for it or anything. Um, but now that I'm with my my wife and I, our daughter lives with us, I notice how I messed around and not just stand with one person. I know how that affected him because she's totally different than the rest of them. She has a little bit more faith. She has a little bit more confidence. Because like she said, my daddy at home, she told me, Daddy, why you, well, you missed the basketball game? I said, yeah, baby, I had to stay up and work late. Um, somebody called in. I had to help. What's wrong? She said, the whole aura changes when you hit the stadium. That's why I like when you come watch me. So that made me, you get where I'm coming from? That, gave, that was a confidence boost. Because even though Coach said she wasn't as aggressive last week playing basketball, you show up, now she elbowing folks, stealing the ball. She <laughs> Daddy got her back. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I understand when Orby, Mr. Orby says it gives you a certain boost of confidence because I didn't have that. And I look for that confidence in the streets with tough guys who I thought they was tough. But that wasn't being tough. That was being emotional. Reacting off emotions. I didn't get this job. I'm going to go sell dope. That's an emotional reaction. That's not being tough. Being tough was to keep going and applying for more and more jobs till you get what you want. Look for the yeses. You're going to get a million no's, but that yes going to be go. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave it right there. All right. All right. I, I guess I can share my story. Um, mm -hmm. I am a, uh, a father uh, of a daughter. And I have two grandsons. Um, my daughter, I adopted her as my daughter when she was uh, basically a, a, a teenager. Uh, we developed a relationship and I just it started out just kind of being a surrogate father and it, and it evolved to the point where we decided, hey, let's make this thing legit. And, and so I legally adopted her as my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, don't think I've missed anything. The, the bond, the love is there. We've had, uh, all of y'all have children, you know the ups and downs that you go through. Uh, we shared them, but she turned 33 this year and she has told me having a real dad and I underline that a real dad. And, and what's a real dad? All the things that you guys are describing to being an active presence for us, cheerleader, promoter, when you need to lay down the law, probably should have laid down the law more at times, but <laughs> anyway, yes, I've, I've done that. And I'm proud to say that, that she has turned into a wonderful parent herself. She, she's very conscious mother to my two grandsons. They're 14, four. Um, only drawback is I wish their dad would play an act more of an active role in their life. And so I have consciously made up the decision, hey, you know, I, I can sit here and fuss and be mad and cuss him out and all that, but I'm going to just step up the plate and do what I have to do. Right. And, and, and my goals, I think you said, Mr. Baker, you know, just, just help them lay a foundation uh, so they will be successful. You know, I, and, and, I, and the reason I chose this topic today is uh, it, it just seemed like somewhere along the way, how do we break the cycle? How do we break the cycle? I'm, I'm, everybody in this group, it seems like you, you, you're doing what you're supposed to. You're good men, good fathers. Okay, but the community at large, you know, what, what can, you know, I, I don't, I don't have an answer. Maybe there's not one. Maybe there's a series of things. But, but to me, one of the fundamental problems in the African American community is the lack of or the de-emphasized role of the father, in my opinion. I, mean, I, I think we dribble our seed a little too uh, without caution. Okay. Un without caution. We dribble our seed without caution because we attract our eyes. What attracts us, we, we, we get that. And we're willing to, I don't know about women, but as men, we're willing to make certain excuses because you look good. And I think we need to be more, and this is just what I came up with. And I tell my sons, it's just be more careful where you put your seed. I'm not saying that y'all mamas is bad women. I would never say that because if I call them bad women, that would suggest that all I mess with is bad women. Right. 
<clears throat> you get what it would tell more about me than it would about them with me trying to expose somebody. But I did tell them just be more careful where you where you lay your seed because I think a lot of men have a problem dealing with the child because they have to deal with the person that got the child. Mm. And they might not like them. They might not have never liked them. It might have been just something to do. Okay. That, I like well, your honest answer, Mrs. Dick. You you, you count it like, like it could, is. Could I share something on that? Because I, I agree with you, uh, Mrs. Dick, but I also believe that it's the other way around, too. Uh, sometimes uh, this cycle of uh, bad dads in our community is sometimes not based on the dad at all. If the mom doesn't like the dad, it's easier for the mom to cut the dad out. And sometimes trying to hustle and make things meet with that child support, which is a story all to itself, and other things, some dads get so frustrated, they just step out of the picture because they're being forced out. Uh, my opinion on helping break that cycle in our community is, number one, not pushing dads out in the first damn place. Even if the relationship is going sour, even if they moved on, uh, the dad should still be a part of it. And I'm going to go ahead and share a little bit about me to kind of push this position through. Uh, my wife that I'm married to now, uh, her daughter is my stepdaughter. Her dad is in her life, and him and I don't get along at all. We're from two different worlds. We approach things totally different. My wife hates them, but we have the understanding that when they brought that child into this world, he is a part of her life. So we make sure to uh, not make excuses for them not to get parented time try to make sure we give him a little space so he can come see her at school and stuff and work as close as we can because it's not about us and our egos. It's about that child and the connection with her father. Now, I feel confident saying that because she seems to be closer to me than to him. But I'm proud to say that she's like that because of the experience that she has with him and not something that I said. You know, I'm one of those dads that I don't mind doing girls' hair. I have four sisters. I know a little bit. I don't mind telling girls that they don't have to do tea time and wear a skirt uh, to please a man. And if somebody gets on your nerves, it's okay to punch them in the throat. That's the kind of guy that I am. That's how I raise my girls. The dad, I'm not going to trash him, but we're not on the same level of stuff like that. All right. All right. And if I'll just jump in on there, Ari, because you took uh, a little bit of mine because I was going to say that sometimes, uh, well, first to, to the viewers that's watching, you know, we're talking about the impact of fathers in their kids' life. Correct, Mark? That is correct. Okay. So sometimes it's not the father. It's the way that the... Um, Female, I don't. Uh, I'm. I'm trying to think of the girlfriend or whatever. Then got pissed off, maybe because he cheated and they broke up. Maybe because he did this, or maybe she just got tired of him, and so now she don't want him in the kid's life. But it is some fathers out there, especially black fathers out there, that's really trying to be in their kid's life, you know. But the mom is saying, feed negative to the kids. That's sorry, MF. That's sorry. You don't need to do this. That's and you know, and the kid is like lost because the dad is there and trying to be there but can't. So sometimes it's the mom that's keeping the kids away from the dad. Now the dad, if he goes to school and try to uh, attend a event or try to do this, sometimes the mom might try to file a restraining order on him. So I'm just simply saying that sometimes it's the mom's keeping those kids away. From the deads, cause now there are some dead be dead, and the six were saying sometimes they just going out there and they just laying that seed out there and doing doing what they do, but it is some good deads out there, some good fathers out there that's trying to be in their kids' life. And, and one thing I did with my daughter when my the granddaughter was born was I told her some told me say don't tell her don't put him on child support, take all that back. Don't get none of the benefits or nothing. You gonna help her. You gonna do it. You've always we've always made a way. 
But what I found, though, is that, okay, he's on child support for the rest of the kids. And he seemed to not want to or have to mess with them because he feel like he's doing his part. I'm giving you some money. With my daughter, he don't have that tie. He just come get her when he want to. He spend his money on her. My granddaughter, he, you know what I mean? He have, it, it's more open, it's more loose. But I, I only have one daughter that her mom was like that. And it was just, and I ain't gonna lie, it's just because her mom is rich and white. And I end up marrying a rich white girl and, you know, they're uppity. Um, her father never thought I was good enough, which is, that's all right with me. But the thing was, her stepdad is cool. I mean, all, all my kids and some of kids I call that I raised when I was in relationships, they still call me Daddy Chris when they see me around you know they'll be with their daddy and say that no that's my daddy too i know he ain't my real daddy but that's my daddy too because he was there and and will continue to be there i just don't believe any child should be left behind if i can help you now if you ain't helping yourself i'm not going out of my way right right you get you know, i'll say this on, on on one other note on that is sometimes just because you pay child support doesn't mean that that's it you know, sometimes it's a little bit more. You still have to be in that kid's life to, uh, you know, that kid may not see that coming in. It may go to the mom or whatever. I don't know. But sometimes you have to physically be in that kid's life also. At least I was because I had put myself on child support when I got divorced or whatever. And my ex, she took me off of it, you know. But sometimes if you're just the average guy and you're making maybe 20 30, 40,000, whatever, and you have to pay, I don't know, let's just say $500 a month, and your kid is a six foot two, 200, uh, 300 some pound kid. Sometimes that five is just enough. really not enough because his enough. shoe is, is, is probably $300 for a shoe. So sometimes you have to do a little bit more, you know. That's all I want to say on that one. Man, this is a good topic. And, um, uh... Like I said before, uh, Wizzo, we probably gonna have to do one just on this. But I want to yeah. <laughs> circle back around with the child support. Sometimes the child support is put in a position where they don't care what the daddy wants or says or wants to be connected. They only want to know how much of a, a percentage we can take from you, and we want that. I had a judge tell me, "Why are you fighting so hard to spend time with your daughters?" And I told the court, I didn't get married to pay child support. So even mm -hmm. though this marriage is gone, I still think I should have a part in my kid's life. And the judge told me, this child support, even though it seems hot to you, it's so you can take care of everything that they need and you don't have to be in their life. And they want to get in contact with you later, uh, so be it. But right now, it's about this child support. And it killed me. Everybody else was like, well, you know, you don't have to deal with them. You don't have to worry about Christmas birthday. It's like, y'all missing the whole picture. I want to be part of their Christmas and birthday. I want to be part of their school. I got the child support. And trust me, when I got the money, I want to give more than what the child support wants me to give. Not to their mother, but to my children. Mm -hmm. And I really think the, the way the child support system is set up in America today it does a big disservice to not just our uh, group of people, but all American dads. If you look at the news uh, from Tyrese to uh, Brad Pitt, they hit them over the head with that child support. And when you look at it, it's like, is this child support really about the child or is it about punishing the dad for having the gall to leave the wife? That's what that, that's, that's the thing. And because, if, if 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 I had my children, I was awarded child support, and it's just my cardinal thinking. I would have put all that money aside because I don't understand how I paid eighty thousand dollars and they can't afford to go to college when they get out of high school. I'm seventy five thousand dollars in debt at one time. I mean, not now. I really worked to get that down, but I'm seventy five thousand dollars in debt, and he don't even got a car. And I'm like, well, where the money go? Right. Because you could have put that in the trust, or you could have put that in the savings. And because I would, I, the things that I think that they say you need child support for, these are things I was going to have anyway. Lights, water, gas, my own place. If I got a child, they just going to enjoy that with me. It wouldn't be so much of a burden 
you get where I'm coming from with that to yeah. for them to enjoy. Just like, I mean, I hate to be like this, but some guys have living wives that don't work. To me, that's kind of like if my child was living with me, didn't work, you know, just we're going to make it. We're going to make it do what it do. And if I get child support, well, then that's your money. I'm going to put that up for you for when you get old enough to spend your And then I can coach you on what to do. Look, you got this much money in the bank. You don't have to go to college. You can get you a trade because all the guys that went to college are working for the guys who got out of high school and did the trade. Right. They got out of high school. They did the trade. They bought the building. And now they hire the people that went to college. To run. Right. <laughs> okay, so can I, can I interject? I was just, just about to say, Mark, go ahead and uh, close us out on this okay. one right here. Yeah. Just good conversation, but I want to end this. Get everybody's opinion on. Okay, you, you, we, we, we're all fathers. What would you advise your sons to do so they will be good fathers for their own children? Just a couple of points. You're advising your sons or your daughters to be well, good parents. Did I'll you- I'll start off on that just and I'll be brief on it right there. Um if your son is watching you, then you know, lead by example. Uh-huh. So if he see everything that you're doing and that you're doing right and the man that you are to his mom or to his whatever, or even if y'all not together, you and the mom that he see everything that you're doing, then he'll see that. Shit, man, my dad is cool, you know. So I'm just gonna be brief on that one right there. Uh, and just guys, if you guys can see the comments, people are off in the comments hitting up something. So if y'all want to call them out or ask them a little bit more info or whatever, please feel free. I'll keep putting it up on the screen. But that's just me being brief on that. Uh, anybody else have anything on that? Advising the sons, yeah. All right, are your daughters on be on, on what they need to do to be good parents for their children, right? First and foremost, uh. With me having strong faith and believing in Christ, give your children back to God so they'll have a foundation to grow up on a righteous foundation. And that book even say, if you lead them the right way, even if they go away, they'll know their way back home. They'll know right from wrong. That That's very crucial at the very beginning, if you ask me. And then everything else will fall in place. Okay. And All that's right. just what I found. I'll try to keep it short. but. Uh... My girls and my boys get the same conversation from me. And this is based on being 0 for 3 in marriages. Um, First and foremost, it's good to love each other. But when you get into a marriage, and this is from my book, um, marriage is a business. It's a contract. And just like you start in the business, you have to have a clear end state of what you want this business to do. And in the event the business does not go well, you have to have an exit plan. And the exit plan starts before the marriage, which is a prenup. I talk to all my kids about getting the prenuptial. And this is not about stealing from what somebody else has. That prenup should be based on what y'all have now and how y'all going to equally split it in the future. Because let's face it, uh, all relationships don't last. And in America, divorce happens all the time. But what people don't talk about is how much money the judicial system and lawyers make off of divorces and stuff. So to avoid all that headache, which usually ends up being taken out on the kid, have a plan before you get married and the game plan to stay married forever. But if something falls out of love and things doesn't work, let's make sure y'all have an understanding that this is how we're going to split it amicably without spending all this money for lawyers. That's going to take more money than you're going to give And here. By the way, when you do a prenup, you can't stick child support in there. So some people get at me and say, oh, you just don't want to give child support. That's not something you can put legally in the prenuptial. Hmm. So that, gotcha. that's me. Cool. All righty. All righty. We didn't cover all that. Mark, everything yeah. good with it? Yeah, that's good. Move on to your next topic, sir. Okay. And uh, just to <laughs> say how, <clears throat> excuse me, how Ari was saying uh, uh, we should have a part two of that. Actually, if we do, Ari... That'll be part three, because if you go on my uh, page, uh, uh, someone else had that, how black fathers are in the like, child's life or something like that. And that was a really good podcast also. So that was cool. So uh, let's move on to the next topic, getting off of the impact of fathers. Sticks, what you got for us today, man? I'm really worried about this nation. So I'm going to ask you gentlemen a question. 
do we really, really, really have in a president? Are we really? Is this a legitimate presidential election this year? Do we really have any legitimate candidates, or or is it already pretty much done? We know who we are going to put in there. Legitimate president election. All righty, all right. Uh, and, and, well, let me before we even go on. I'm just going to say I like Cornell West running for president. A lot of people ain't going with Cornell West, but I love him running for president. He's part of the Poor People's uh, Foundation. Yeah, campaign he was also with dick gregory when dick gregory ran for president back in the when he beat nixon actually um back then um so i like that but looking around i'm not seeing anybody but it's either trump or biden okay. and it don't look like biden gonna make it so it don't look like a presidential race to me it looked like just two people up there this guy already won right can okay. i go first wizzo I was just gonna say, Ari, before you go, you hold up. <laughs> let me let Mark. <laughs> you know, go. I got something to say, y'all. So I'm, I'm all about you to wait. Let me let Mark go first. Okay. All right. Okay. Let Let me give you my overall thoughts on presidential elections. Number one, I don't think we really choose candidate. Not just this election. I don't think we choose a candidate. I think you're given a platter these this is your, they dress it up this is choice a you present it as you having a choice but it's not a real choice they're going to dress up two candidates they're going to give them the resources the flowers the works the okay and say this is what you choose from you don't have yes there are other candidates running but real but but uh but you really don't have a choice because the system has decided this is the menu this is what's on the menu and this is what you are going to choose from. And that's not only true in this election, that's been true in previous elections right there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Bring, bring, hey, bring hey, me that. Bring it. it. Bring okay. it. First and foremost, I think the issue is not so much uh, as just being uh, a falsehood with the race. I do think that people are, are getting elected, but they're not getting elected based on the vote they're getting based on the money um mm -hmm. even though a lot of people like trump the reason i believe biden's going to win is because he is out funding him with the money that he's getting over trump now i also want to touch uh brother cornell west if this was a real race where we had a choice we would see him on the news and he would be in the debates and he would probably have higher numbers but the thing that brother cornell west doesn't have with the others is money and like you i i love him a lot donate money to him but his numbers are not even registering and i think that is uh unfair in america and the reason why america is set where it is today because in my opinion um politics is like the game you either gonna be red or blue you go, you're going to represent red or blue. Everybody else, we're not hearing that. Yeah, you out on the street, but we're not hearing that. When it comes down, it's either red or blue. And with red or blue, it depends on who has the most money. Um, my prediction is going to be Biden because he's the lesser of worse evils. I don't think he's the greatest. There's a lot of things that I don't agree with him on. But when you compare him to Trump, uh, it's no contest. We still have... Um, What's his name? Kennedy, the yeah. the grandson. Uh, he's a hot mess. But we hear more about him than we hear about uh, Brother Cornell West. And yeah. that rubs me the wrong way because it shows that our politics is flawed. We go around the world telling people how they need to have fair uh, elections. And if you look at other countries on their ballot, they have 17, 18 people on there. Right. Our ballot, we're lucky to have three. Most time, it comes down to two, and it's red or blue. Gang, gang, and that's all I gotta say about that one. Right, right. Well, I'm gonna just say this right quick. Um, I haven't even seen anything about Cornell West. I I don't know, but at the same time, I've I've I haven't even heard anything. Maybe I missed it on the news or whatever. I don't know, but I've heard a little bit about Kennedy and stuff like that. So I really don't know. As far as having a legit president candidate, or ble I believe that's what you were saying. I've 
personally think Joe Biden is too old. I think Trump don't know what the if he's talking about or doing, but I would choose Biden over Trump. And I've said it before, if Trump freed every black person in the world, I still would not vote for him. And somebody told me that it shouldn't be personal like that with me, but it is because he's stupid, you know, in my opinion, you know, and there's, he has his followers and he has the ones that love, that love him and he cannot do no wrong. Black, white, all races and everything like that. And I think that, um, you know, that the, it's been proven that the, um, the Republican Party, I think they hadn't won the uh, popular vote since Bush, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot which Bush, but they hadn't ran, won the popular vote since then. And that's why you have the electoral out there. For them out there choosing that and doing that or whatever, because the Dems have been killing them. And then I have people that say, well, they don't like the Dems because the Dems give out too much and try to keep people down and hold you back and hold back. But I've always said, you know, you should start at home. So if you're going to help people help home first, cause America is helping all around the world. And we've had people get upset. I'm going to get a little bit off topic. We've had people get upset because people received the extra $1,200 or, or something like that, which came too late during COVID They've got the extra 600 for unemployment and stuff like that, whatever. So, you know, but you, I can go on. That's another whole one. I'm not going to keep, I'm not going on that. But just to say that I think Biden is going to win. I think uh, he's still too old. I'll, but I know that once he win this year, then next, uh, after that, and what is that, eight? then you're going to see a flood of Democrats and Republicans up there on the stage. And I'm just hoping that it'd be somebody a little bit younger because I'm just real big on term limits. And I'll leave it right there. Uh, Cornell West is, is that he's still running. He's been shunned. They, they, they really did an infiltration job on him and the poor people's party. Right. They, uh, to me, it seemed like they planted someone in the poor people's party and then they had a sex, sex scandal. So now he went to the Green Party because he didn't want to associate himself with that. That's really what kind of took him down. But when he first announced he was running for president, he was on every news station, even in the UK. What they were trying to do was say, OK, Cornel West is stealing people's votes. But then when they did the poll on people like me that was going to vote for Cornel West, they said, well, if I can't vote for him, I wasn't going to vote anyway. So he's not stealing your vote. He's getting votes from people that don't like neither one. And it's hard for me to vote for when, when people say, well, we got to vote for the lesser of two evils. When I sit back and think, and I'm, I'm a big Dick Gregory fan. Like I said, my dad listened to it all the time. He rarely talked. We just listened to Dick Gregory and Johnny Taylor. But <laughs> um, <laughs> Dick Gregory said this, and it caught my attention. He said, if you think that you have to vote for the lesser of two evils or you vote for the lesser of two evils, you might be evil yourself because good would never vote for evil under any circumstance. And then he compared the last election to a pedophile running against a pedophile, allegedly. I don't know this. Right. I know Donald Trump do women wrong. You get where I'm, I know what they say about Joe Biden, but I don't know these things. Because these men ain't in jail for doing the stuff that, that y'all say they doing. There's, there ain't no proof. You get where I'm coming from with that? Right. But it just made me think. If if that, if, just say it is true. If I vote for him, I'm voting for a pedophile. If I'm voting for him, I'm voting for a pedophile. Who am I voting for? A pedophile? Allegedly. Okay. <laughs> Allegedly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mark, what you got, Mark? Okay. Question for everybody. Are we going to perpetually be caught up? And again, I'm about breaking the, the, the cycles. Somebody mentioned uh, it's a game, red, a red of the, of the blue. Do we have to remain in that vice grip between that cycle always? No. I think we, we are unless we break the system because this is a system and it's running perfectly. It's a system. And, and they understand that it's a system 
And they know that they're not bigger than the agenda or the system. And it's running perfectly for them. As long as, as long as we think of white people that we work with as of our enemy, that the system's working perfectly. Because those aren't our enemies. Those aren't real white people. They can't really help us if they wanted to. You get where I'm coming from? They're, they're the same as us. We work next to each other. They ain't doing no more than I'm doing. But as long as they can keep that divide, the system is working perfectly because everybody knows war is a racket. They make a lot of money. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mark, you got anything else? And, and, and Stick, I hear you on that, but I do hear even a lot of my, my white counterparts recognizing this ain't working. This ain't working. Now whether, they, now, whether anything comes of it, any real solutions, but uh, I'm start. I want to believe, and I could be wrong, that there is going to be a critical mass of people in the next four after this election say, "Hey, we we got to do something. This is this system is not working." Well, I I thought yeah. that's what January six represented was white people tired of white people. Well, I I, I want to <laughs> check <to> what. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carter said, uh, and and I agree that this system um, has to come to a, a critical mass because people are just getting tired of having this two party choice. Thank and you. I think a big part of that is something that you said earlier, Wizzo, that I wholeheartedly believe in term limits. Mm. The reason this system works is because people get in the system and they realize in that first two or four years, either you're going to be with what we're doing and roll with it and get all this money, or you can get out and cry with everybody else. It's the haves versus the have not. Mm -hmm. My, not prediction, but my wish is after this next turn for presidency that everybody, and it's not just a black or white, Hispanic, everybody that feels like there's a have not, rally together to get them an independent party representative to run for president i, I really a, think a we real need third, a viable third party candidate for a yes and and somebody that everybody's behind because like mr west i really thought because he was part of the poor people's campaign that people like the naacp and stuff was going to back him after his uh announcement it's been crickets mm. and he's got uh i posted his um his presidential link so people can follow it. But right. he's got a lot of valuable things to say. But again, like I said earlier, and I stand by this, the presidency along with the politics in America is about how much money you got. And no matter how much you're talking, uh, if you ain't got the money to back it up on the commercials and all these fundraisers for the big people, Nothing's going to happen. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't believe in the popular vote. I believe if everybody got on their TikTok, their Facebook, their Instagram, and started pushing the narrative for a third party person, we'll see change. But right. until then, as long as they can keep us arguing about who's the oldest and who's, who's the most freakiest and stuff, all that is puffing mirrors until election day. And then we start the cycle all over again. Yeah. And, and Mr. Baker, I would say uh, I agree with you, but that movement, uh, uh, the election is November the 6th, whatever day that follows on, the very next day, that movement for a third party needs to stop. I think it needs to be systematic, sustained over time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and, and I would say Cornel West may not be the right person I mean, not that I disagree. I agree with a lot he says. I disagree with some of the things he says. But he may not be the right candidate to be a, a viable third party candidate. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. I, I hate to say this, but uh, and you brought up a, a great point. I agree with you, Mr. Carr. Everything you said, I just want to add on that when we talk about that third party candidate, somebody that's going to uh, be the new person, unfortunately, it's not going to be somebody with the brain power of a Mr. Cornell West. It's going to be somebody with a smile and um, um, 18 million YouTube fans. Mm. It's, it's going to be a celebrity mm. because our kids and the way the mindset's going with politics, everything is about entertainment. You know, uh, people hate to hear this, but I'm a 1970s baby. 
the days of Walter Cronkite is gone. True. We, we don't get real news anymore unless you watch NPR. We get sound bites, we get flashes, we get uh, prettiness here, tragedy there, and it's gone in 15 seconds. Yeah. So when we do get somebody that I believe is going to be val valid for the future, it's going to be somebody like that. And hopefully it's somebody that's got all this glamour and shine and a, enough intellect to pull smart people with them. Then that's what scared me. But that's what scared me about about Trump. When I found out that Bill Clinton told him to run the year against Hillary, y'all didn't know Bill told him to run for president. Didn't know that. He's a he's a he's a he's a closet Democrat. He told him, "I gave all y'all money." He now, said, "Hillary, you want me to show my taxes?" Yeah, yeah. Clinton was the one who suggested that he get more involved in politics. Didn't tell him exactly run, but get more involved. And then he ends up running against his cousin, Hillary. Been to all his weddings. She says it. They're friends. And so that scared me. And then he said, well, I'm a run Republican because these people believe anything I say. Right. I remember hearing him saying that. So we're talking about a legit Aston. Uh, yeah. that we have a legit president candidate. Uh, we don't. So I was just about to say, you wanted to, if, if no one else had anything else, then you go ahead and go and close it out on that. And uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I was doing. I was closing it out just by giving you some some background information that I kind of found out that formed me back to going, what are we doing? Because it looks like the same people are running. Looks like the friends are running against each other, and it's entertainment to us. Right. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's what's up. So. All righty, Mr. Baker. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw my topic out there. Probably going to step on a couple of toes, but that's what we're here to do. Yeah. Crunch some toes and conversate. So my topic is not really a question. It's more of a, a request. I believe and I would like to have more JROTC, Junior uh, Reserve Officer Training uh, Corps in our high schools. Now, I know not everybody is pro-military like mm -hmm. me, but there is a reason behind this, and it's not to get more people to join the military because Junior ROTC is not for people to join the military, but to have a better understanding and love for the country. One of the things that I found talking to young kids when I was a recruiter is that a lot of kids, especially black kids, despise America. And even though they have various reasons that I agree with, the one thing that I give them pushback on and I'll never agree with is when they say this country is not ours. Mm. This, this is not our country. And I have to remind them that even though there's people in power with systems to try to keep us down, this country is more ours than anybody. If you look back at the history and I'm not just talking about back to the, um, the colonial wars and stuff, I'm talking mm -hmm. all the way to the back when they brought the first enslaved person here. That was the start of the United States of America that we know now. The reason why the United States of America is a superpower is not because we know some smart stuff and we got some smart people. <clears throat> it's because we've had generation upon generation of free labor to build stuff and never had to pay it back. So when we talk about America, um, it gets me a certain way because if anybody has a stake in how America is and should be benefiting most from America, it's us. But I want all the youth to feel that way. I want people to be right. more patriotic and want to do more things and not just let the people of old say, well, this is the way it is, so we're going to do it this way. We need some new ideas, but we can only get those new ideas from people that first of all understand that this is your damn country period it's out it, to me it's always been the country when i found out the truth i found out before they even got here the white house was built hmm. i found out before they got here all this stuff the states and all that stuff was already here they just fell on something and learned how to capitalize and play the game when i found out that at the height of slavery six percent of the nation were legit slave owners, four percent was black, two percent was white. Changed my mind a lot about this country. Hold on, wait a minute. You ain't bring me over here. I was here already. 
I sold my people out just like they did in Africa to send them over here. And the slave trade been going on way before they came over here. Way before they came over here. The the root word of the, the, the etymology of the word slave is Slavic. Those are people that were always being captured. We aren't slaves and we're prisoners of war, of an ongoing war. We don't understand the game and what's really going on. Because this is a republic. It's supposed to be, like Orby said, this is supposed to be a nation for the people, by the people. We're a republic. But if we keep telling everybody it's a democracy, it, you, you tell a lie long enough, people start believing it. We're not a democracy. We're a republic. A nation for the people, by the people. They, they tell you we adopted the, the, the um, Constitution. Yeah, they adopted it. It didn't necessarily mean that they wrote it. They might have wrote some extra stuff in there, but that thing was here, already here and established when they got here. Okay, so Mark, you can't walk from a place with kings and queens and then come over here and decide that you don't want no king and queen no more and you're just going to let everybody do No, it was established when they got here. We're talking about people that used to have the king and the queen telling them what to do. They got over here and found out, hold on, wait a minute, the Moors, y'all ain't got no king and queen? No, we self-govern ourselves. Hmm. Mr. Right, Baker, Mark. just bring it back. Okay, uh, your position is is the creation of more JROTC programs in the high school to encourage a sense of civic pride and patriotism amongst the youth. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. It, there's another part of that, but that's part one. The main reason I want to bring it back. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, I was a former teacher for for a long time. Most of the schools I taught in, they did have some type of JROTC mm -hmm. program and they were pretty active kids were involved so uh but I'm, I guess you know but but that doesn't mean that every school has them I don't know the numbers how many high schools out there that have them versus those that don't but you seem to be of the opinion that uh it needs the, the program needs to be even stronger than what it is yes, Correct? Sir. yes sir okay all right then um, and 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 not j just just to add to what you're saying, but um, what could be some other avenues on top of JROTC to instill a sense of patriotism and pride in the youth? Because not all kids want to do that. Just you know, kids being kids, they uh, gravitate to certain things, certain organizations, depend on who's running them a lot of time. Yeah, your goals are admirable, but I'm just trying to go a little bit beyond beyond JROTC being the mechanism to instill that sense of patriotism. Okay, uh, and I agree with you. First of all, thank mm -hmm. you for uh, your time as a teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. That's another topic that I feel strongly on. Our teachers are not paid enough because they are part of the investment of the future mm -hmm. of America. We're getting that. But some of the other groups that I think would be important at school is uh, the Future Farmers of America. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about farmers and not just corporate farmers, uh, small family farmers, black farmers that are out there still doing stuff. Um, home economics. Um, it sounds simple, but it goes a long way for uh, having a young boy or girl go out in the world and be independent and not always have to eat out um, and learn how to mm. cook and budget things. But I, I want to circle back to why my JROTC is, is such a big thing for me. Uh, number one, I was in ROTC for three years before I joined the Army. And even though I knew I wanted to go into the Army, one of the things that was instilled in me from my first year as a cadet was that the only limit that I have is what I don't want to do. You know, there's a lot of things like when I was in gymnastics, if you don't have the right gear, if you're not flexible... You can't do this. Don't even try for it because you don't have the posture for it. If you don't have the range for singing, don't try because we don't have time for it. And JROTC, you can come in not knowing anything and cool. say, I want to be on the drill team because I like the weapons that they twirl around. And they will take you from day one and bring you up to that level if that's what you want. Now, this is something that helped me in my 20 years of the Army. But while I was in JROTC, I felt the courage to branch out to everything else because I felt nothing's off limits to me. Mm -hmm. And I got that from, and don't get me wrong, every junior ROTC is not the same, but my experience 
really opened my eyes to the possibility of getting kids motivated about being adults before they become adults. And I just feel that, oh, I have to go into college. Or if I go into college, I'm not sure what I want to do. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good option. And when we talk about our community, I get off of this. One of the things that killed me about when I joined back in 1988 in the Army, my three years in ROTC let me know that all I have to do is be fit and willing to learn something. And I'm going to get a trade. The majority of the people that I went to school with thought it was a waste of time. Uh, there's better things to do than join the Army. And to me, if you had a glide path to go to college, that is an absolute truth. You should go to college. But if you grew up like me with eight kids, no dad, uh, living off of welfare, trying to survive off welfare, and there's no other option, staying at home to sell dope or staying at home to hope that you get uh, discovered is not an option. When you hungry like I was hungry, I need a paycheck ASAP. And even though my first paycheck, and I still got it, was $680, I felt rich because it was mine and I was going to be able to build on that. Fast forward to retired, I go home, and a lot of those friends that laughed at me or scoffed at the idea of joining the Army wish they would have joined the Army. <laughs> and, and some of them, they're not even here today. And I don't mean to pick on them, but they were waiting at home for something to happen to life just passed them by. Mm -hmm. And we got too many kids, especially now with this internet sensation thing. They really feel, I just got to sit back and wait for it. You can't always wait for things to happen. Nope. Can I ask you something, Mr. Harvey? And Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, because y'all are military. I I've never been in the military. I never knocked it. Matter of fact, my shirt is a military shirt for thanking you guys for cool. Your, your 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 search. I think that ROC is offered too late. I think that because of and I'm just watching the ROTC kids. I see how much structure they gain from being in it. I think we're waiting too late to offer that. I think it should be offered maybe in middle school, where these kids okay. when they when structure is really 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 crucial. 11, 12 years old. I think they waiting too late. That's just me because I see the structure. Now, I'm not against military. I just don't like that our military is everywhere but here. We got a border crisis. We ain't got no military down there. They in Afghanistan. They in South America. They everywhere but here. But as far to, to keep on your topic, do you feel that we should offer these services earlier in, in, in a child's life and then when they're up? out to make a decision when they're 16 17 14 15 you you know what i mean yeah i, I and i like that um i still think that uh jrotc should be for teenage because of the different mindset it really does uh prepare you mentally for a military lifestyle without committing to the military but i absolutely love the idea of starting it at a lower level for the kids to help them and maybe not JROTC, but back in the day, back in the 50s and 60s, um, I'm originally from Chicago. They had a lot of communities that had these drum clubs. And the drum clubs was just like the military, but it was the community drill teams. So they took young men and they gave them little uniforms, almost like the Boy Scouts. But they had to have their hair a certain way. They were always dressed up. They did parades. They did functions to hold the flag and stuff. And this was the precursor to a junior ROTC. So I I absolutely think, especially with the way the kids are today, I think it would be a perfect program. And I just want to add this. I think it would be a perfect program that the military pays for, mm. not the school system. Because um, a lot of times we get these – Great ideas about, hey, how can we do this? Go for it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it falls on a school system that doesn't have the appropriate funding in the first place. And right. this is my other part of doing ROTC. Bring those government funds into the schools. You bring money into the school, it's going to help get the building and stuff like that. But it's going to free up money for the school to do other things for the kids. But I think it will be great to start it off at the middle school. At the middle school. All right. So 
we're talking about uh, more JROTC training in schools was what you were talking about. Uh, sure. Just to touch on a couple of things from that on my end, uh, Sticks, when you hear me talk about me and Ari worked in Iraq, I was a civilian, so I've never been in the Army oh, okay. uh, or the military period. I worked over there as a contractor, oh. and that's how I wound up meeting Ari, and we've been friends, and we've kept in contact ever since way back from the Hip Hop Soda oh, Shop. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. Hey, it's still coming. Okay. Uh, Hip Hop Soda so Shop still coming. Yeah, yeah. Sticks, so I'm, I'm, I'm currently, there. I've been in the reserves. I'm currently in, in the reserves over for 23 years now, so cool. I do have a, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. And uh, just so my little points on that is uh, the uh, scholarship, my stepson uh, received a full scholarship to, I think it's Howard, mm. uh, but he got up there and stayed probably like a semester and it wasn't for him, but he was in the JROTC all through school, loved it. I mean, he was starch crease, it was, he was a Marine and all that stuff like that. And it, maybe he got there and found out. I don't know what they do. I don't know, but it wasn't for him. But he was a big old article in the paper for him and everything. He received a full scholarship there. And I'm just touching on the key points. And uh, also, I think that college is not for everybody. I mean, I just don't think that it is. I've heard someone say before that, you know, they give you all this money to get you caught up in all that right there, whatever. So college is not for everybody. And I know Ari have said before, and I may get it wrong, that, I mean, if you're sitting back and you don't have nothing to do is either drugs or this, then go in here and you do, what, two, four years or whatever, you get out, you, you'll learn a trade there. You got college funding free, I think, I'm not sure, and different things like that. So uh, so it's just a, a lot. I'm going to add Melvin to right here for us right quick. What's going on, fellas? What's going on, Mel? So it's just a lot, uh, you know, to go on on that. And then the last thing I touch based on this is that, Arby, we was talking about new ideas. Um, and I think that's, I think a lot of the young kids that's coming up now have a lot of new ideas. But until we get some of them old heads out of there with them term limits, I mean, we <laughs> nothing's going to change. And not even on, uh, not the military, but even like when we talked about uh, what last week or whatever, when we were talking about the school system and the dress code for these kids and the different, th you have a lot of older people in there. We need some of these young bloods coming on up in there, running for things and getting more active and stuff like that. And that's all I have on that. Let me just brief Melvin. Melvin, were you uh, listening in? Yeah, a little bit. I was getting a little situated, but I only caught maybe like 20 seconds Okay, I got in here. Well, before, uh, since Arby brought this topic, before he closed out on anything like that, we were kind of making a little pass, but he was talking about more JROTC training in schools. So do you have any Ooh. input on that? Um, and, you know, we'll make a little pass around the room. Yeah, I think I think it's a good idea. Um, ironically enough, uh, my fourth class ever in high school, my freshman year, fourth period was JROTC. And... Uh, I knew when they said I had to learn the creed every morning, I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> I was like, this is not for me. But uh, it is good because, um, you know, even though, you know, the jocks like myself, we might have teased a few people. Um, it gave a lot of people structure. It gave a lot of people discipline. It gave a lot of people um, something to look forward to. So I think it is an earlier step to make that passage if it's for you. And opposed to maybe waiting till you're 18. And you know, in the movies, we just see the kids doing the pull-ups and we it is, but it's really not. It's it's curriculum. You know, th these kids are in there hour after hour after hour, year after year after year, learning. So um I think it's great, honestly. Um, and two, it's an elective, like it's not a requirement. So it's not something you have to do to graduate or something. It's kind of optional. Cause again, I was in it and got out of it. So just like how somebody wasn't in it and can get in it. So right. it should be implemented in as many schools as it can be because it's not even required to graduate. Right. Okay. Arvin, you hold yours for a second because I want you to close close us out. Let's see if uh, Mark got something first. Okay. Uh, I'm good. Just enjoying the, the dialogue. All right. All right. <laughs> Six, what you got? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good too. That He answered my question. Like I say, I just think maybe we should adopt other countries way of doing things as if mm -hmm. structure as a society 
from the get go instead of waiting until they're sixteen. Right. Before you try to give someone structure, that first five years is crucial. Right. And we have a lot of problem in our schools because we don't have that structure in the home no more ever since we stopped going. If you ask me, since we stopped going to Sunday school, these kids don't know how to learn. And now they just problem children that are probably really smart, but they're labeled problem children because they've never been told to sit down and listen. Right. Yeah. I do want to add something. Okay, Actually, go ahead. I, I did this, this top okay. Our next topic from you can put me down for is is hold up, hold up, Mark. Hold up, hold up, Mark. Hold up. Don't don't say the topic because I don't want nobody to have time okay. to think about it. <laughs> don't don't say the topic. All topics okay. have to come straight I'll off the top. To the next time you invite me on, we, we may get to it, but don't say it yet because I don't want nobody to okay. have to think about it. Right. Uh, Mr. Rice, I mean Sticks, will you finish? Yeah, I'll finish. Okay, and I'll just say this right here. I like the idea, and it never come to me, and I heard Arvi's point, and I'm, Arvi, I'm going to let you close out on this, but I never thought about it being offered to them in middle school or junior high, whatever they call it now, because sometimes those kids are coming up there, and they don't have the father. They don't have that male figure in their life, but not to drill them too hard, but just know just to give them just enough and that structure and everything off in there in the middle school. And I also liked about bringing the, the government, the military in there to fund that because the schools is always saying they don't have the fund for that. But I just want to close out on this and for Arby close it. I kind of like that idea. It's not for everybody, but it just some of them kids coming up in their middle school have no sense of direction, and that can kind of guide them a little bit. But that was it on that. Arby, close us out on this more JROTC training in schools. Okay, I'm going to close it out with something a lot of people have touched on when we talked about this topic, which is it invites them to learn discipline. It invites them to learn the importance of sitting down and shutting up and soaking up stuff. And it also invites them to do something with their hands, not just thinking. Because a lot of mm -hmm. times, uh, these times of age, everything is over the computer. Nobody does anything manual anymore. And in the military, that's your backup. Computer goes down, what you're going to do? So uh, thank everybody for agreeing with me. I really thought I was going to get more <laughs> pushback on this. And um, I'm pleasantly surprised. So thanks. All right. Okay. So, Melvin, you just didn't jump in. So, But mm -hmm. you already knew to have something ready. So run that. Yeah. Um, one of my questions was, should black people in general, male and female, oh, cause <laughs> those are the only two genders. Um, <laughs> should, uh, male or females, uh, black people, should we date interracially? Is that a benefit or does that deprive from us socially? and economically as a race in anybody's opinion. Is that an is that an asset or a liability? Come on, Arvi. Oh, okay. I'm I'm ready for it. Uh as somebody that's uh, a universal data all around the world. <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you right now, keeping my black card, that it is uh, a asset to date outside the race. And mm -hmm. the reason I say that is because when I talk about love and the construct of having a relationship, it shouldn't be based on what um, race you are. And some people say, well, we, we're not keeping it 100 with our group. Other people do that. I don't really care about the, what the other groups might appear to do. But mm -hmm. here's one thing I know about being a black American. None of us are 100%. Everybody's got a little mix in them if they do that DNA check. Unless you're from <laughs> South Carolina and uh, the Gullah <laughs> community who's pretty tight with their DNA, everybody else might have something from English to Irish in them. And, and that's just a fact. Um, the one thing I've learned from my interracial uh, dating and, and my kids is that it expands the black culture. And what I mean by that, it doesn't turn everybody black, but it gives more of a deeper understanding and meaning about black Americans. Mm. All of my kids, even though they're mixed, they identify as black. Not because I told them that way, but because of the experience they have, 
their mothers are forced to understand my side of America. Oh, really? And they grow oh, up teaching that. So it continues on and on. It's no longer an uh, easy way to say, well, blacks over here, whites over here. No. Hey, Papa, I'm black and white. You, you hate one side of me? What's going on? And it mm. allows education to continue. So people that don't look like me, they really hate the hell out of this, but it is what it is, and this is why they're becoming a minority. Mm -hmm. I, Mr. Rice. I'm with you, Orby, on that. Um, I just like it because, hey, one drop rule. I can turn you into me in a minute. I'll <laughs> never be you, but I can turn you into me. <laughs> yes, you may be a whole star he, he track over from here. A, from a, from a, yeah, he's looking at it from a mutation. I'm populating my country with me. So you you made the law. You the one said it. Oh Lord. Assimilate <laughs> or die. You said that. So anything I make, anything my sister make, guess what? That we more populated. Right. We, we populating it out. We turn them out. You know. <laughs> <It'll>, <laughs> We the dominant gene, whether people want to believe that or not. We are the dominant gene. Very true. We are not the recessive gene. The recessive gene gonna receive. The dominant gene gonna dominate. That's just what it is. That's why it is the dominant and a recessive. You know, the sun helps some of us and kill other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. You know, I, I enjoy it. Uh, I, I'm like Orby. I'm a serial date. I like girls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with, I like with, women's. Yeah. I like all women's. women's. When you, when you, when you, before I make my little uh, stuff here, when you get down to it, it's all pink in the middle. Okay. So, but, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. I'm, yes, sir. I want to just say, so yes, you know, you was talking about should you know we date outside the race or mixed race, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've just always been attracted to pretty much my own. Um, I've never thought about dating outside of my race. I know uh, I have a son that will not date a black woman, period. She will either have to be white, Hispanic, or whatever for his own reasons, you know, which I know a lot of them, but I'm just not going to get into them. I have another son that uh, he doesn't see color like that at all. You know, it just kind of how he goes with it and i have another child i'm not gonna say daughter but uh, it is <laughs> she she doesn't care to date outside of her race for her own reasons you mm -hmm. know and i and i'm not big on the word love i mean i just i'm not gonna that's another podcast but sometimes to mm -hmm. me that's just so freaking overrated to me you know because you know my mom i'm not gonna even get in that one but uh, so I just, that's another whole long topic. I don't want to draw this out. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to date outside my race, I, I haven't been in that position. So I can't really say, um, if I would or wouldn't right now, I'm going to say, no, I wouldn't. But if I be, if I were somewhere or whatever, and it came across, like I met my fiance and this lady was attracted to me and I came on, then maybe, but. I, I don't know. So I, that's all I got on that, Melvin. I don't know. I think that Fair enough. When, we, when we say date inside of our race, again, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about where you dribble your seed. I think we need to separate our race. Like, let's do this like I would say Caucasian people do it. You have white people, they may have white trash that they don't mess with. And we have black people, then we have street people. And I think we, I don't mind staying in our race as long as it's not street. Because that's not who we are. Hip-hop is not our culture. Uh-oh, uh here come Melvin. Uh, that uh, it it I gotta, sounds I gotta, like a cat uh, system kind of thing, but I got a I got a leg over the fence on this one. I I I'm 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 I'm, I'm with Wizzo is Mr. Wizzo's very close to me, but I completely disagree with y'all. Completely. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I ain't gonna sit here and say I ain't. I've only had one piece of cake. I've tasted a lot of flavors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, I ain't holier than thou. 
<laughs> right? I'm, 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 I'm a serial dater too. Well, was, uh, was, but that was, you know, high school, college, but, um, that's what that's for. But yeah, I, I personally think, well, for one, statistically, um, one out of four, every black woman will be married. So that means 75% of our sisters will never be proposed to. Um, I think too, when it comes to dating within our race, um, <clears throat> I think personally speaking, imagery is important. Um, so just how much, just as important as it is, or as it was for mixed individuals to see Barack Obama up there for, for mixed people, it's mm -hmm. also important too, when let's say a Jay-Z walks in a room or a school and he's walking with a black wife. It, 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 to me, it, it's, it's imagery on all boards. Um, I do also believe it, it. And again, I don't look down on nobody that decides the, cause again, I was, I, I did it myself. So I ain't, like I said, I'm not better than nobody, but I think the most important, in my opinion, the most important thing you can do for black people is procreate with black people and teach other young men and women how to be better black people to not be those street people you were talking about oh, yeah. and now now again when it comes to marriage or because dating leads to marriage again we also have to understand marriage ain't just love you're marrying somebody's political views you're marrying someone's family you're marrying someone's race and their culture it's not just that person so again love can be love if that's what you believe in but also, too, you're integrating everything that comes with that person and their race. You get what I'm saying? So if I marry an Asian woman, I better, and I don't like rice, I better fucking learn how to start liking rice. <laughs> <laughs> if I go to her people's house, yeah. you get what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's, it's all of that. Um, her people could have raised her with certain Republican views. I'm from the South. A lot of us are heavy Democratic. I'm not Democratic no more, but I'm saying now when it's time for birthday parties for the babies and it's election time shit get a little heated <laughs> see that that's also the little things when i say it is not just love is love like i you know i had a privilege to live in south florida where there's a lot of races and i was told i have real specific stories of other races jewish italian spanish where their families would tell them don't date these kind of people like black people are the only race for the most part. Well, like we kind of think it's bad telling our children only date us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh huh. The Jews got no uh -huh. problem telling them don't 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 bring them the Mulianos home. Yeah, the Italians right. got no problem saying don't bring the Mulianos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, it's you're only us that go right. do, do what you want to do, baby. I, and and, and <laughs> I, I I gotta give some pushback on that because I believe that uh, optics is everything for mm -hmm. a lot of people, but not all people. But when I look at optics, um, I'm looking at the groups that say, don't date outside your race. You know, mm -hmm. you, you talked about the Jews, you talked about the Italians, but one of the groups that is prominently known in America to make sure people don't date outside their race or marry outside their race is this assumption of the pure white race number one there's no pure white race All right. they're, they're just right. white people that want to hold <laughs> on to that but there's no pure mm -hmm. race and the other thing about this for me is uh i can't have anybody put parameters on me. fair enough I, I can't have anybody tell me um you are instructed to love only who we want you to love because but, we're trying but, to keep this thing through. And I just want to finish this and I'm going to let you answer that. Um, go the ahead. greatest thing about the military that I saw is that people that grew up in this construct of, hey, you can know people, but don't date outside mm -hmm. of our race. Mm -hmm. Usually end up dating outside their race because they've been forced in parameters so long and been taught certain things yes. that they get out there and find out, wait a minute. The shit Momo and Papa told me was fucking wrong. <laughs> you know, the, the shit uh, Mima told me was fucking wrong. And I'm going to be my own person. And I know some people don't have this same definition for love. But mm -hmm. if you have this feeling for somebody, 
that that's your person, it mm -hmm. shouldn't matter what the race, what the gender, where they come from. You should be able to, to marry or be with who you want. Now, as far as black love, mm -hmm. this is where it gets kind of muddled. And I'm not changing my position. It's just how right. I see it. Right. I love to see black couples together. Not because mm -hmm. they were forced together, but because they loved each other so much they made a commitment. Oh, really? But I also love people that's dating out of the side of their race because they're pretty much saying, I don't give a fuck. This is who I love. And this is what we doing. So <laughs> right. you ain't in the bedroom with us. We doing this. And if, if you don't like it, look the other way because this is us. So that's how I see it. Love who you want to love. And if it's somebody in your race that you feel and you're not being forced to keep a gene pool, do that. But if you feel like, hey, this person on the other side of the water mm -hmm. that uh not only eats rice but builds Mitsubishi and they want you in the family, <laughs> go on over there. How you want it to you? <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Come on, man. I I, I I I get what you're saying, and your perspective isn't flawed. What? Uh -oh. But like I said, to me, it's more mm -hmm. than just love. For example, black people bring in over two trillion dollars a year, right? But I feel like if I'm taking away some of those funds and sharing that with this white woman with their family already got money, and I can be giving it to one of my sisters who in the same boat as me, where does my dollar mean more? And and also too, I look at it from this standpoint of who gets the pride from what. For example, one of the big things that segregation killed was the fluctuation of the black dollar. Because when we were segregated, all we had was the black restaurants, the black supermarket. You get what I'm saying? But as soon as we was able to eat at the white man restaurant, to shop at the white man store, we ran over there and all the black mom and pop stores went out of business. So I have that same mindset when it comes to this when all we had sisters we was cool now when they say fuck who you want we fucking everybody yeah. but it's taking up but but now that's the same reason why one out of four yeah. sisters are married and black women have the highest increasing rate of dating of marrying outside of their race because they realizing brothers ain't married because one mm -hmm. we already got the street the street guys like he talked about yeah, that know. ain't doing it and two we got some brothers that's going so yeah, to over here, doing it right, you know. So it's, it's damn if you do, damn if you don't. Right, maybe you fr you freezing from time to time, but we still getting you. But uh, if I will, could just come in on that when you was talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you, you, yeah, you was kind of, you, but we we got you. But every now and then you kind of pause. But uh, me, he's frozen now. Yeah, I think he. I think you can still hear us. I think, but uh, you, you there, Mel? Come back, Melvin. Mel. Come on back. Melvin. He may be getting ready to come back up in here. Uh, I don't know if he can still hear us or not. But but while you guys are listening, I got to make my point. I hate to make it while he's not. There you go. Oh, Mel, there you back? Back. Oh, I, okay. I, 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 I'm with you. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> okay. So we, we was kind of chopping it up a little bit just to make a point. But uh, for those that's kind of watching, you know, the topic right here, Melvin brought up was should uh, black people, so to speak, date outside their race or whatever. And my comment when you were saying that, you know, if you marry somebody Filipino, Chinese, you better fucking start liking rice or you better this. Me, my thing on that is I don't, I'm not marrying them. I'm I'm marrying my wife. So if that dad or her dad's a Republican, I don't give a fuck. I still stand where I stand because I'm not marrying him. You know, and I'll be firm in that. And they if they if I'm in that group and they're around talking, then I'm gonna let them know, hey, I ain't for that shit, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I don't like that rice and I don't like Jamaican this or whatever. But that's just me and the way I stand on that. I'm gonna let them know. Mm -hmm. This is where I stand. So I'm because I'm not marrying them. I'm not sleeping with them at night. I'm sleeping with my wife, their daughter, or whatever. So that's just how I am on that. And then um you was talking about the money. Um, 
and and I, I felt your point and where you was going with that. Uh, but I think that if you're in a certain, if you're in Florida, where you mm -hmm. at anyway? I'm in uh, Palm Beach. Okay, right you now, at, yeah. you're in Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. Let's say I don't know. I've never been there. I plan on being there one time, but you there and you off in the bar or or wherever else, and it's it's ninety eight percent white there. You know, you may wind up mm -hmm. dating someone white and you not not thinking that you may have wanted to or whatever or something but i don't know that's just kind of where i was going with that and i'm my point with that is is you probably not going to look at the financial part of it at that time you know and seeing well if i'm with this white woman mm -hmm. i'm taking away from my black I'm, i mean if i'm if i'm thinking with my dick i'm not <laughs> That's most yeah, of what men yeah, with. Yeah, you first but, off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think we do yeah. more damage when we say, I think we should just be businesses instead of black-owned businesses. Because racist people like to pick on that and say, oh, that's just for black people. Even though a Mexican guy can open up a restaurant, it'll be all in Spanish, but they don't say it's just Mexican people. Right. That's hey, y'all, if I can just pause for just for a second, Mr. Rice, if, if we could just go on and just say uh, uh, acknowledge and just speak to our guests, just verbally, our viewers that's watching, you know, uh, you know, y'all, we we see y'all in the comments. We appreciate y'all watching. Uh, Hello, comments. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry to cut y'all, Mr. Rice. I just wanted to acknowledge y'all. No, no problem at all. Acknowledge your eyes of art is a great person. She's a she's mm -hmm. a, she does what I do. She makes uh outfits too. She makes clothes. Been knowing her for a little while. Okay. And uh, just wanted to, I, I can't say his name, but I, I wanted to thank him for dropping Cornell West Lean. Oh, that was me, brother. That was Let me tie that into the comment that we have yeah. right now. Um, it's Imalik. It's Imalik 001, and that's my um, one of my nicknames. Uh, the nickname that I got was from a German woman. And here's the cool thing about it. I'm my leg means uh, one of a kind, special, unique. And when we talk about the financial part of this race thing, I'm 100% on board with what you're saying. Sometimes mm -hmm. we get so caught in this black lockness of just saying it's just us that we miss out on other things. Now, when we talked about um, the black community after enslavement, that was a necessity to stay together because we couldn't shop at other places. We couldn't get anything. But if you look at the world the way it is today, globally, a lot of times our businesses and our word get shut down because we don't want nobody else to talk about it, do anything about it, but blacks. Now, I'm not saying you have to share the same point of view that I have, but if you want to reach out and touch the world and get some support, you might find some people like you for more than just you having the black agenda. It's going to happen. And the plus thing about that is that we don't fight our own battles anymore. And the thing I mean about that is when you look at what happened in Virginia, when they started marching and they were like, hey, uh, we will not be replaced, even though they was talking about Jews. They really had their racist agenda about whites. You know who came to our defense? Not us, not NAACP. Other white people that love us. And here, here's the thing that I'm pushing out there. Not everybody is going to be on the level of, hey, I need to marry me a black man, a black woman. And here's another news flash. Even though you write about the sisters, about the sisters not being married or feeling that they don't have anything, there's a lot of sisters that have stepped back and said, God damn it, it's about time I could date outside my race and not get picked on. Maybe. Because they, they have the same flavor. And all I'm saying is that there is no wrong answer here for people that want to marry based on race. That's cool. Just don't beat up people that's not having the same idea because their experience and their mindset is different. But at the end of the day, like Brother Stick said, when we go out there and we make a connection, it grows our community. There, there's no denying that. When it happens, you don't have a Chinese baby with mm -hmm. Afro. You have black babies. There it is. You don't have a Malaysian. You have a black Tiger Woods. That's just the nature of how it is. So um, stay strong, my brother. But there's a whole <laughs> bunch of people that, hey, look, that love look, us, I, man. I, and and I, they come. I agree. 
Hold up, Belvin. Hold up. Hold up, Belvin. You can't. Belvin. Belvin, hold up just a second. Hold up. Let me let me go I'm back to sticks. You, brother. Let me go back to sticks, you. Melvin. Melvin, I'm gonna go back to sticks and then I'm gonna come and let you close it out. So sticks, I had cut you off a while ago. Sorry about that, but go ahead with what you were saying, and we're gonna come back to Melvin, let him close this topic out. Yeah, I me personally, when it comes to dating, first of all, we didn't never used to date. I don't know when we started dating, but we used to court. I didn't take girls on dates. I call you on the phone for two, three months. Then we going together. Even though we never went nowhere, we going together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you give up. Mm-hmm. We didn't have no money to be taking you out on formal dates and showing off. Nobody had no money. You used to scrounge up, cut a couple yards so I can have $15, 20 take you to the movies on the weekend, go to the mall. You know. <laughs> but um, I see the benefit in what Melvin is talking about. I just think we had some really bad uh, examples, such as when Muhammad Ali won the gold medal, and instead of him coming to the hood and buying food and saying, look, it's the food that helped me learn that, that, that I ate all my life. Now I'm boxing and knocking people out. He went to the white side and said, okay, y'all, I guess y'all are better serve me. And then when they were like, no, we still don't like you. He got mad and threw his medal in the river. It changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. I think that was a terrible example. Because like you said, Melvin, as soon as we were able to go where we couldn't go, we flooded it. We forgot about our own. And and let's think about it. Most of us say our food is way better. What were we doing over there? In the first place, easy. <laughs> Right, Melvin, take oh, us home. Yeah. You get- <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, look, the, the, when it comes to Muhammad Ali and, and people leaving, um, the whole notion of you know niggas get a little money and, and get out the hood is because uh, it, it's a it's a safety thing. Honestly, it, it has nothing to do with not being wanting to be around black people. It's safer to live in safer areas. Um, to pick on what Orvi said about, um, you know, everybody loving us and we're able to do this and do that. And well, if you're dropping your rod off in German women and they're giving you nicknames, of course they want to march for us. I mean, it, it's, it, <laughs> I mean, I, I, they have no other choice. <laughs> I mean, it's common sense, but yeah, honestly speaking, I just feel like, um, <laughs> if, 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 if you, and, and again, it's my opinion. It's not right or wrong. But for me, if I if my commitment is for the betterment of black people, my time, my children, my money, my teachings, my thing is going to be with a black woman giving me all black children. But that's me. If you do that and integrate that with other races, and you're able to give other races other knowledge about the black culture, that's fine. But in my opinion, that's what the fuck TikTok do. Every single app, every single radio, every single TV show showing these white folks, Spanish folks about black culture. So why I gotta impregnate one is culture? They know culture because they follow us. Everything we do is the shit. So I don't need to mess with their daughter to teach them culture. Turn the goddamn TV on. Yeah, that's all I'm I, I just want I just want to clarify uh when you said that, I, 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 I dipped <laughs> down in uh Germans. I just want to make sure it's clear that um it's been German, French, Talk Italian, to Talk to Irish, um <laughs> Zambia, oh, uh, a whole might bunch in Nigeria because they in Germany thick. We uh, might get tested or Togo, get tested. um every part of America, all 50 states and territories. And I, I say that to say <laughs> this. <laughs> um, I've been around and this wasn't because I was trying to educate people on the black culture or spread the black numbers. It was because right. nobody can tell me what I can and cannot do. And the one thing I'm going to stress to my kids is that before hey. uh, you get locked into a race mindset, you're a human and whatever mm-hmm. you want to do as a human you could do it because the one thing mm-hmm. about race, and then I'm going to get off this 
because I like to talk a whole lot. Mm -hmm. The one thing about this race that <laughs> I've noticed from all this cast movie and stuff that the race was created for one reason and one reason only. You know what that was? Compete. Uh, That's what it was to make is. sure that the poor blacks and the poor whites didn't loke up and kill up the rich whites. There you go. This is the reason. And look it up. I, I do a lot of reading, mm -hmm. so you might find something. Different. But the main <laughs> reason I found for a uh, such thing as a Negro or a black person and a white person, because they didn't say that before. It was only after the rebellion where they said, wait a minute, these poor people are outnumbering us. How can we have a level to balance it? Divide and conquer's always work. So from now on, y'all are not white. You are not just slaves. You're indentured servants. As a matter of fact, you're white indentured servants. You're right under us, but you're under us. And y'all, y'all just gonna be some black people. Well, you just gonna be slaves. So y'all over them. And the reason why y'all can't get to us as rich white people is because them slaves will keep you down. So turn around and focus on them and give me your money while you're over there fighting. Mm. And Damn. That's in the All nutshell. Right. So yeah. I think when more people understand that, they realize, no, it's cool to be proud to be black. Um, I don't I don't believe in people that say they hate their color and stuff. I'll never hate who I am. <laughs> but right. I'm I'm not also going to define myself as somebody that has to sit in this parameter because I've seen too much and I know enough from getting around that regardless of the color, that human race thing binds us all whether they like it or not. All right, all right. And so that question to the viewers that was watching that uh Melvin brought up was should Black people pretty much date outside of their race. But Arvin, mm -hmm. before I go into this next topic, uh, out of all of the countries that you named in cities, states, and everywhere you was kind of dropping that seed or rod, was it all pink in the middle? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes it was kind of dark, but everything <laughs> that had light on was pink. Okay. Uh, there that didn't change. And Some sizes right. were different, but it was all pink. Can I say something, Mr. Wizzo? Because I, I, got I, said, I married a a really, really prominent white girl in my county. Like her dad think he Rush Limbaugh. He Limbaugh. He's he been syndicated. <laughs> he got a talk show on AM 1500. Lynn Willie. I married his daughter. I don't know if y'all ever heard of him, but he's pretty big amongst white people. What I found is was the education part because he didn't know any black people like that. And he thought all black people were like street until he met my family, a praying family. Mm -hmm. And so it changed his whole complexion about wait a minute, these can't be black people talking nice, they ain't cussing, they don't listen to no rap. It what what hold on, my misconception was messed up. Well, damn nigga, watch BT. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but see, that's the problem. A lot of white people are watching BET and then they're saying, oh, the black culture is hip hop. That's not our, that's not our culture. Right. That's not who we are. We back in the 60s movement where we dress nice. You know, right. back then. That's who we are. And we keep letting people tell us who we are depending mm -hmm. on the, the century or the, the generation. Right. right. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Eyes of Art was uh, when we was asked when I asked about that pink, I got a what? So yeah, we talking about was was that vagina was all of the vaginas pink in the middle, and that's what we were talking about. So we just wanted to know since he been around in all these different countries and states and cities, did the color change anything? So and Mr. Paul, I don't mind. She 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 have a brand too. She and she from New York, so she got a, she's very passionate about stuff. So. Right, 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 right. And there go my ladies of I talk. One is from what RP is a Russian princess, and her friend Bordy is from Puerto Rico. So I knew a lot of people. All right. Well, hello, hello. Thank y'all for tuning in and tuning in and checking it. And we appreciate it. So uh my topic since we didn't we've covered uh black fathers and kids' lives, legit presidents, more JROTC training. Uh, should we date outside the race or should blacks date outside the race and all? And so I just want to know, do we have freedom of speech? Yes, but you got to watch what you say. Okay, so we don't have it. We do have it. 
Okay. But if you can take the consequences for what you say, then go okay. and say it. But if you don't want to bear the consequences for what you say, don't say it. Right. Okay. <laughs> I 100% concur because I, I think there should be a, a add on to that. You have freedom of speech, however, you also have to accept the consequences of your words. Mm. Right. Okay. So let me let me tell you guys where I'm going with that. Okay. So I am I used to hear people talk about they were in uh, Facebook jail and YouTube jail for different things like that or whatever. So I'm like, well, what? I agree you should have freedom of speech to a certain extent without saying, you know, threatening someone or anything like that. But where I'm going with that is right now I'm in YouTube jail for something that one of my guests said on the show related to something <laughs> related to something medical. So oh, right okay. now I'm not uh, streaming on YouTube because they put me in YouTube jail. And what happened was the guy the comment and everything that he made was something in the medical, but YouTube doesn't give you the full example or tell you the full thing. What was said, we're talking about freedom of speech, Melvin. So uh -huh. I don't know what the problem was. So I appealed it and everything like that. So I went back and watched the video on one of them. This happened back in December the 5th or whatever. One of my guests made a comment about the vaccines. Well, who wasn't making comments about the vaccine then you know everybody was so i'm like well i guess you don't have freedom of speech or whatever or or do we so but go ahead oh I, who somebody hey, about to jump in on that because topics i i had this we conversation words, but we stopped saying look I, I saying just, I, I, hold up all right i think okay. rice is saying something go, go ahead brother i'm sorry oh. I was saying we stopped saying it because they started doing that on a lot of platforms. Just the mention of the word vaccine is like some trigger. And so I started, there's words I started using a lot, allegedly, and jab. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, and then I, I don't tell people what to do. The first thing I do is tell you my opinion. Did I get it? No, I didn't get it. But my reason for not getting it was there was not enough information out when they happened they didn't have any long-term deal because it hadn't been out long term so they don't know what's going to happen 10 years down the road and i don't want to be on a commercial sick and then see a commercial saying oh well come get some money because you're real sick because you took this 10 years ago you know how they do them commercials how they right. get them uh lawsuits and i didn't want to be that but that's how i got around that some of these platforms they tell you have freedom of what they but they really do have an agenda because you got to think about it. It's, it's in, it, this is still owned by the entertainment business. Right. So if you're speaking about something they don't want you to, they'll stop you for a week. They might even shadow ban you. Like, you'll come on and won't nobody get your notification. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Arby, what you got on that, Arby? Uh, analytics. I, yeah. I believe that the analytics, just like some of the facial recognition and stuff, is racially biased. I believe if uh, some people can get on there and say stuff, never get touched. Somebody like you, you say the word one time and you're banned. It's like, how the hell is this happening to me and not these other people? And by the way, they're saying even worse stuff. Uh, I believe yeah. it's all in the analytics that they have built up. And with the analytics, it's not just saying how many hits you're going. They're also keeping a, uh, a digital footprint on who you are and what your topics are. So mm -hmm. personal belief, I'm not throwing anything <clears throat> out there, but just based on what I've been reading, uh, if you don't look like what their agenda is, because you're right, Sticks, they have their own agenda behind there. They're looking for a reason to shadow block you or block you or cut you off. Mm -hmm. You can say something defending yourself. Matter of fact, uh, my man Godfrey, uh, not Godfrey, what, what's the comedian's name? Oh, Godfrey, one of them. Yeah, it's, it's Godfrey. Um, mm -hmm. he got banned, and all he did was defend uh, a negative statement somebody said about him. And he said, "You need to pay attention to my show," and said the person's name that he said, and he got banned. And it's like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. And this brother's always on there talking about stuff, but mm -hmm. the difference between him and the person that said it, unfortunately, that I could see was race. 
So yeah. when we talk about this, yeah, we do have freedom of speech. However, I think social media is another construct to control that freedom. Because again, we can say what we want, but in their arena, we got to deal with the consequences of what's said. And that leads us to having to change words or say different things that mean something else. Yeah. And you know, on that note, Arvey, before someone else say something, I was thinking that along the lines that here I am, I've been podcasting for um, about a year and a couple of months and I'm, I've reached 512 subscribers and I have over 170,000 something total views. And some of my view, some of my uh, shorts and some of them have read 10, 10,000 and 9,000 views. And so I'm thinking, and this is, guys, I knew nothing about everything that I'm learning is learning from on the go and, and research and shit like that. I mean, I've just started using this program here a little bit ago, but I'm just saying to myself, are these motherfuckers just really just trying to just maybe block me or keep me back or hold me back or some shit like that? Because everything that my guests are saying is on fucking Google. So maybe they just, you know, but I, but. This is not my source of income. As I was talking to Arby, I, I love having this podcast and, you know, it's a, it's a baby of mine. I have my own fucking full-time job. If they shut me the fuck down, I just jump to the next platform. If they shut me down, I jump to the next, which I run out of the motherfuckers. And then I'll research how to start my own goddamn platform. But, you know, so it just kind of made me wonder about that. But I'll be like Jasmine, what's the name? Say, I yield back and uh, let somebody else jump in on that. <laughs> I yield back my time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I like, I hate to, I hate to, you know, who else just went through this was what's that woman name? I don't agree with everything she said, but I like how upfront she is. But she just got dropped from the, from the Ben Shapiro. Oh, Candace Owens. Candace, Candace Owens. Because they're not getting along because she refused to say what he wants her to say. <laughs> That's yeah. basically what it comes down to. She won't. Yeah, I think um, I think because the Israel Palestine thing, and he's obviously very, uh, exactly. uh, very his wife is very Jewish, and yeah, uh, yeah. look, uh, Fred Hampton, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, uh, and the long list of individuals will tell you there is a such thing as freedom of speech, but it doesn't mean it's going to work out well for you already. <laughs> <laughs> right. that's, that's basically what it is in, in any aspect, in social media in politics in, in social reform, social justice like you have the right to say whatever you want to say anytime yes. you want to say it that does not mean it doesn't come with consequences it does right. not mean it doesn't come with repercussions so yes, you will always have freedom of speech because nobody can physically not make you say anything right until you might say something where somebody physically take you to a point where you can't say anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but okay. yeah, you could say you, you always yeah. will have freedom of speech as long as your voice works. And right. if your voice don't work, you can type and text. So. All right. All right. I, before I go to a uh, uh, next topic, uh, anybody else got anything on their freedom of speech? I'm like him. You you just got choices, man. If you can deal with whatever consequences come with your choices, then mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. Now, I if if I feel strongly about something like a Martin Luther King, like a Malcolm X, I don't mind going to jail for that. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna accept those consequences if I feel that strongly about something. I, I hope people understand that. If I feel that strongly about something, I don't care at this point how you feel about what I'm about to say. And I'm right. I'm willing to take those consequences. If you say, hey, if you if you say that you're going to jail, I'm probably gonna say it. Just <laughs> put my hands behind my back. <laughs> Just right. don't beat me. I ain't gonna resist. Just don't beat me. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> already, already. Okay, Arby, you got anything to touch off on that before we get out until the next one? No, man, it, it's uh, some great stuff, man. Some really good yeah. stuff going on here. Hey guys, I have to say this that. When we hold these random, you never know what you're going to get. We all come up. This shit is not pre-programmed. 
I have no idea what you guys are going to talk about. You have no idea what I'm going to talk about. We just bring that shit up and talk about it. That's why I didn't want Mark to go on and say about the next topic. I want him to hold that and then release that shit to where you don't have time to think about it. You know, that's how I kind of want it. Like right now, I'm getting ready to call on somebody for this next topic, and we don't know who in the fuck I'm going to call. Hmm. But I'm going for the one that, that for the number to come out to five, I'm going to come up there to six. Hmm. What else you got for us? I'm, wait, I'm waiting on the topic. You say you had us a topic. Well, I do, but you know, I ask everybody to bring a couple. I, I, keep, I have a phone full, but if you don't have anything, I'm going to move right along. Do you have one thing you wanted to touch on? Not right off top. I'm just okay. You got it. Okay. Um, Arby, you have something? Man, you know I always got something. I used to be an Army recruiter. I come off the hip with some stuff. Uh, I'm going back to the school thing, and okay. I really think that uh, we should do more to have um, organizations like the Future Farmers of America in the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, our country, I believe, is becoming more and more a country of consumers, and people are forgetting that some of the same stuff you're buying in the store or can't get in the store anymore. You can invest some time in water and grow it yourself. Right. You know, and me, I'm a city born country boy. So I'm from Chicago, but I love the country. Um, it's nothing for me to go out there and kill a chicken, and have fried chicken from something that used to live or uh, gut a hog or go hunting and stuff. Right. They don't teach stuff like that anymore. And, you know, I'm going to say this on that, but I don't know if, if Melvin or anybody else had anything. And, and I wanted to bring this up the other day when we were talking uh, about the um, uh, sexual harassment and everything. When Miss LaMonica was saying something about how the schools talk about the funding, they don't have the funding to, you know, here we are. We have the uh, kids being assaulted and stuff like that, but the schools don't have funding. So my point is, when you talk about having that in school, the school have funding to fund this 20 fucking million dollar football stadium. They have funding <laughs> to fund uh, all this other shit related to sports. But what about what's going to help them kids after the fact? Because we already know that they don't really teach. Uh, and I've been out of school for a couple of days. The uh, uh, the uh, 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 I, I've lost my thought where I'm trying to go with the life skills. You know, when we come up, we learn how to do a lot of things in school. Now it's catered toward this freaking test. And I and I don't I can't stand that fucking test. I don't know what they call that shit no more. But I yeah. can't stand it. But they're not teaching those skills like that. We come out of school, we knew how to fill out a fucking envelope. We knew how to sew. We know how to cook. We knew how to do all that shit. But open now the bank what, account. Right. Open the bank, all that shit. But now the schools are saying they don't have the funding for this. Now, Ari, this is not on exactly what you're talking about, but I have to go back to when we was talking about the sexual harassment and sexual assault. You would think that that is something that they want to put in those schools and let these kids and let these guys know about it that's being assaulted. And how we talked about the numbers are really, so to speak, just fucked up because the yeah. ones that reported it, there's way more that didn't report it. So you would think that the schools would want to spend that, but no. They making this football stadium bigger so they can get more people in there and generate money. I don't even know where that money goes about anyway, you know, but that's my thing. That is it's definitely it. something interesting to know where that money goes. But this this is my look on that, especially when we're talking about sexual harassment, and sexual assault in the schools. Um, the school had the budget based on locality and state. So even mm -hmm. though they got a good football uh, thing they got to look at what's generating the most money and invest in that. That's what I see. I'm not giving them uh, a free pass on that, but I think that's where it's going. But when we talk about things that I feel on the federal level, not just the FFA, but something like sexual harassment, sexual assault, there should be a federal kick down to every school, not just you know uh, state appointed university stuff. Every school that um, our kids go to should get some type of federal funding to put these things on there. So 
the local government can't say we don't have enough money to fix it because the problem that we're talking about when we're talking about sexual harassment sexual assault that's an international problem yeah but let's yeah. keep it to national it's a national problem that national funding should go to we shouldn't have a school saying that and when people say that i i used to get mad at the schools too until i started looking at how tight their budget is to the point where they gotta let teachers go and then i mm -hmm. look at our national government for giving debt overseas and sending millions to trillions of dollars overseas it wouldn't take mm -hmm. a trillion dollars to fund those programs and the schools and to me right. if they can send money to any damn country, and I'm not trying to be isolationist. They should be able to carve out a way to send money to make sure those programs are in each and every school. And right. I stand on that for yeah. not just those programs, but other programs where they say we don't have enough money to cover. Well, Orvi, I think if they paid the teachers more, we would have more quality teachers. I'm 100% on that, and that's part of the other programs that I was talking about. I, I'm glad you, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Because okay. teacher, nobody wants to be a teacher no more because everybody's after the bag. And the teacher, the teacher don't get the bag. Well, they don't get the <laughs> bag and they got to fight some of these badass kids. Let's be honest. <laughs> but again, and, and, and like I tell people, home training, we don't do that no more. Your child, I shouldn't, as a teacher, I don't want to go to teach your child how to sit down. I should just be able to present my lesson because he's taken from the one that I already know how to sit down. Right. And the only thing I say on that is when you talk about the home training, some of the parents and the fathers are not there. Oh. The mom is having to work two jobs because she's not making ends meet. And so sometimes the teacher is almost the one raising that kid, oh, so to speak. Yeah. And so, that's why they need to get paid more money. Was uh, oh, yeah. 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 So, uh, guys, usually what I do uh, with, when it's four more of us like that, I run the podcast for a couple of hours. So we've been going already for about an hour, almost two hours. So I like to just go around the horn with anyone to leave any closing thoughts. And I'm going to go on and start with Melvin. Last mm -hmm. one in, first one out. No. Nah. <laughs> 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 hey, I got to tell you, man, I, I, I knew you text me. You was at work, man. I, I, I appreciate you getting yeah. back with me, man. That's that's real talk. And I appreciate all you guys coming in, you know, on time because, you know, we already had that, you know, Stigma. deal about us being late but you guys CP have been time. on time and you're right right and I, I appreciate the shit out of that but uh melvin go ahead and let us know what's your last thoughts for this podcast um well just to piggyback off the last question um and and the topic we were discussing i do think uh home training has to be implemented again i do think that it's kind of crazy how um teachers get paid less than judges mm. Mm. i mean of, of all Facts. people like it, it, it's yeah. it's crazy how teachers uh teachers should be getting paid more than goddamn garbage men <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean but um honestly speaking man um I, I i enjoy this every time anytime i see your name pop up on my phone i'm like oh yep <laughs> uh, i don't even know why he asking me well, he know i'm gonna do it so uh but yeah man it's a pleasure and an honor to um just be here and share our thoughts, man. And um, yeah. this is good, man, because um, this is group thought. You know, uh, yeah. no, no one mind is stronger, is smarter than all of ours. You know what all I'm right. saying? So this, this is progressive, and we need this. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate any time I'm, I'm honored to come through here, man. It's a blessing. All right, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Now you said progressive. Are, are you you trying to sell insurance up in here or something? No, or sir, Doc. no <laughs> sir. See, that's the problem. See, it's, see, I'm a comic and I tell jokes, and then when I get serious, niggas want to tell jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're so good at what you do, man. We're looking for that punchline every time. I every know. time, man. <laughs> what, are you gonna say? what are you gonna say on that one? As soon as he said he was a comedian, all I do is put my ear on, on the speaker away. <laughs> We yeah, fucking man. kill our kids. We <laughs> drop them in the shower. <laughs> yeah, hey man, look, man, listen. But, Some hey. of them the sink, the sock. Hey man, you know. no, bro. I I, I, I really appreciate you coming over every time. You know, and uh, sure, like you said, you always. You know, I, I'm glad that my son hooked me up with you, and, and appreciate you coming on every single time. 100%. Six, what you got, man? I just got 
two things and a joke, a funny, a funny meme I saw. But <laughs> the first thing, like I say, we need to get back to home training, like we mentioned. And um, we got to find our own system for these children. We can't keep relying on this same system because they ain't doing them no good. I'm going to take a, a bit from what T.I. said. The young boy said, how come we can't pay the teachers uh, enough money, but we can pay the prison guards to watch the kids? <laughs> the prison guards make more than the teachers do. If the children are our future, why don't we invest in the teachers instead of the prison guards? Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing I saw, and it's just a joke. It's just a funny meme to me I want to share with y'all. A man went to the doctor, y'all, and the doc he told the doctor I'm hurting. And the doctor said, Well, where are you hurting at? He say, My back interest. He said, Well, as long as you keep calling in that, it's always gonna hurt. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> take you nowhere. <laughs> That's crazy. Ari, Ari, close us out with something. What you got, man? Hey, the, the only thing, uh, well, I always got a couple of things to say, but I honestly have to say this this is the most American thing that we can do is it, conversate and conversate from different angles. Everybody shouldn't have the same idea. Uh, everybody shouldn't agree, but everybody should be open to different opinions because this is how we get cross-sectional learning. I'm all about that. And even though, you know, uh, Something that I, I look at like, man, I can't believe I'll get thrown under the bus. So I can't believe somebody think this way. I actually learn from that. It gives me a different perspective. And one of the things in my 54 years on the planet that I consider an asset is that I can sit in any circle and listen to somebody talk and be able to have the mindset not to get angry, but share my thought on the topic. And we can mm -hmm. get up, shake hands, and be friends. Um, yeah. Again, I've been around the world. I haven't been as promiscuous as I was joking on. I only got <laughs> four kids. But I know a lot of people. And I've been in a lot of different areas where people that didn't look like me thought one opinion until we had a conversation. And they had to really assess their whole frame of thought after talking one time to somebody that looked different than them. <laughs> Right. And I think today in America, that's mm -hmm. not happening like you used to. So gotcha. let's keep this American thing going because we're helping America. One conversation exactly. at a time. All right. So just to, just to recap a little bit, we've talked about black fathers, you know, being in the kid's life, a legit president candidate. We've talked about more JROCT training. Should blacks date outside their rice? Rice. <laughs> right. <laughs> race <laughs> freedom of speech you know and a couple other things so but i just like to say to the viewers that's out there watching whether you're watching this now or you watch this later i'm always looking for guests to come on the show so we can all just sit around and talk and have a good conversation and give different input and different things and learn from each other you know and one of the other things i like about this is you see the respect that we're giving one another. Everyone is not talking all at the same time. You know, we're sitting back, we're kind of waiting, we're come, coming in, we get off in another. Me, I'm taking some notes over here from time to time, and then I go and bring those off in. So, I mean, you know, that is really appreciated other than, you know, than the fact, too, you guys, was everybody was on time, we come in, you guys are quick to, uh, you know, respond and let me know. Yeah, I'll be on, you know, be more than glad to be on the show. So, you know, like you say, tell a friend, bring a friend. And not only that, I appreciate you guys sharing it. You know, you guys shared it on your feed so your viewers can watch that and sharing it because it's, it's free. It's absolutely free to like, share, and subscribe. So I appreciate all that support. Um, and the last couple of things is on the 14th, we'll be having another random. Never know what's going to talk about. I have some different, I reached out to a few other people that's on another podcast. I have invited that guy over and I'm not sure which are who all is coming right here, but without looking at my notes, but guys, I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate all of your input and I look forward to seeing you guys and having you guys on the show again on Wizzo Talk. Appreciate you guys. I'm going to hit this end button and we up out of here. All right. All right. Peace. All right.